Hi guys, welcome back to another reading recap video. Today I'm going to be going through all the books that I read in the months of June and July. I'm just going to merge them into one video. Now, bear with me, this number is less than I would have liked it to be. I definitely read less books, particularly in July, than I would have in previous months. However, I was at a personal development course for seven days, which is really full on, and the books that I read were quite long, like one of the books was almost a thousand pages. So cut me a little bit of slack, okay? Um, but let's get into the books that I read in June. So, in June, I had just finished rereading the Akatar series, A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is by Sarah J Maas, and I thought, why not continue? I don't want to read books that I haven't read before. Let's reread another series. So I decided to reread the Throne of Glass series, which is my all-time favorite series, like, of all time. Like, I have a tattoo on my bicep from this series. Like, I'm obsessed with this series. It's my favorite. I've only read it once, which was beginning of last year, so I thought, let's do a reread and pick up uh, things that I didn't get the first time, and oh my god, there was so much shit that just made so much more sense rereading it for a second time. I was like, oh my god, this connects here, and this connects here. It was, just, it was a really cool experience being able to read it again, and I also read it in a different order. So I read the first five books in June. Now, the Throne of Glass series is a series that has a novella called The Assassin's Blade. Now, you can read that first, or you can read it third or fourth, like it depends on how you want to read it. There's different orders of reading it. The first time I read the series, I read that book fourth um, and it was really good. However, I kind of already knew what was going to happen because I'd already read the first three books because it's a novella that is like a prequel. It takes place before the first book of the series starts. This time I decided to read that one first. And can I just say that that is the correct order? The Assassin's Blade should be read first in this series because even though I knew what was going to happen, I'd read this book before, my heart felt like it was thrown in and cut out of my chest. Like I was so sad, like I cried so much and I feel like the emotions just hit so much harder reading this book first. So the first book that I read in June was The Assassin's Blade. And the first time I read this book, I gave it a four stars. Now it being the second time and I think reading it first, I have given it a five star. I have updated my reading to five stars. Then the second book I read was We Get Started Into the Series, which is the Throne of Glass book, which is book one, uh, the proper first book one. And I rated this the same as what I rated it the first time. I rated it a five. A lot of people say that they find the first couple of books in the Throne of Glass series to be very um, slow or boring. And I am not part of that crowd. I have been, I was obsessed from the first page. Like it's like kind of got that trial theme throughout. Like you're finding out who the main character is, who Selena is. And I just... Yeah, I can't get on board with people saying that it's boring because I was hooked from page one. Um, and so, yeah, so five stars, four, three, and plus. The second book is Crown of Midnight. And this one, I rated it four stars for my reread. Um, it's definitely not my favorite in the series. However, I think it is very vital and it is a very good read because it sets up a lot of the world building and a lot of the plot. So four out of five for Crown of Midnight. Then I read Air of Fire and I love this book. A lot of people don't like this book, but I enjoy Rowan, the main male character. This is where we're introduced to him. We're introduced to a lot of other characters that we haven't seen yet. And I love them. So. Air of Fire for me is a 5 out of 5. Then we get to Queen of Shadows, which is arguably one of the best books in the series. And I really do agree with that. I think it's probably my second favorite book in the series. Um, I just love Manon's story in this so much. She's one of my favorite characters. And I feel like everything starts coming together in this book. The plot is fantastically written the stakes are high the emotions are high you've really bonded with the characters by this point and I just feel like this book is really setting you up to know that this series is going to crush your soul so Queen of Shadows is always a five out of five for me so those are the books that I read in June again a little disappointing not as many as I would have liked however let's get into the books that I read in July continuing with the Throne of Glass series this is where the books start to get really big the next book that I read so the first time that I read the Throne of Glass stories you've got Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn, right? Now, you can read these one at a time, so Empire of Storms and then Tower of Dawn, or you can do a tandem read because they are happening at the exact same time in different places in this world, different the different characters, it's more interesting characters. So you can read them together in a tandem read, which is where you like read like a couple of chapters of this and then a couple of chapters of this, and, it, and there's a whole thing online that you can find that will tell you how to read them. That's what I did the first time, and I did really enjoy it. However, this time I decided to just read them one at a time. So I started with Empire of Storms and oh my god when I tell you that this book 
The ending of this book, oh my god, like I have never felt like anxiety and fear for fictional characters that don't exist like I did with this book. This book is so well written that like I can't even describe how well written this book is. I am obsessed with this book. Um, I don't want to spoil anything because I feel like Throne of Glass is one of those series where you just, you gotta read it. Like it's so fucking good. But anyway, five out of five for Empire of Storms. That was the first book I read in July. Then we move on to Tower of Dawn, which follows the character of Kale. And a lot of people don't like him. I, however, do. I think he is a very humane, like a very human character. I think he represents what it is to be human, flaws and alls. And I think a lot of people expect perfection from fantasy characters. And I think he really brings that human essence and that human touch to a character. He makes mistakes, he fucks up, but he owns his shit. And I like him. I've always loved him as a character. I loved him even when I hated him. And this really is a Kale re like redemption book. However, for the people, there's a lot of people who skip this book, which I think is fucking stupid. You should never skip a book in a series. It's It's been written to be read. Do not skip books in series. You will miss out on so much information going into the last book if you skip this book. But there is so much beauty in this book. It's set in an entirely new place. It's set in, a, in the southern continent in this world. And there's so we get introduced to the, the southern continent's culture and all these new beautiful people. We get Irene, which is, I think, she's one of the best fucking characters in this entire book. But we also get Nezrin and Sartak, a new beautiful little little story about those two and it's just gorgeous like the lore and the culture and all the significant things that are incorporated into this book like this book is just beautiful i loved this book five out of five now we move on to the last uh sorry the last book in the throne of glass series which is my personal favorite book of all time i don't think any book will ever top this book for me this book there are so many different little plot points in this book, like little things that happen that actually just had me sitting, bawling my eyes out, even on the reread. So the first time I read it, I was a mess. Second time I read it, still a mess. Like I knew what was gonna happen and I'm still upset and I'm still crying, which I think is just a testament to the power of the writing in this book because you are so emotionally invested by this point. Kind of think about it like Harry Potter. You know how Harry Potter has got seven books, there was eight movies. By the time you got to that last book or that last movie, you had been with these characters for so long, so you were so emotionally invested with them. The Throne of Glass series is eight books, so it is the same kind of concept. Like, you are so emotionally invested into these characters that you just generally give a shit about them, even though you know they're not real. So Kingdom of Ash, I think, is the most perfect book ever written. It is my favorite book of all time, and I will die on that hill. There are so many part places in this book where I cry, but the writing is just perfection like it is beautiful it's so emotive and it evokes such beautiful emotions from you and it is such a perfect ending to the story and I just think it is perfect I have no flaws with this book if I could give this 10 out of 5 stars I would but 5 out of 5 for Kingdom of Ash and then the last book that I read in July was Reckless by Lauren Roberts now this is the sequel to the Powerless book Look, I probably set myself up for a little bit of failure here reading this after the Throne of Glass series because as much as I really enjoyed this book and the first book, like it's a fun kind of story, the writing just, just like it just does not compare to the Throne of Glass series. Like it's kind of like going from the like beautiful literature, high fantasy into like there's a lot of smut and there's a lot of it's a very romance based book like I felt like there wasn't much plot to this book like I felt like the romance was really drawn out which is fine that's the purpose it gives I probably just set myself up for failure by reading this after Throne of Glass um because I was a bit bored I was like okay can we get some more plot can we move it along and the writing does feel a little bit more juvenile like a little bit more fan fiction based which is fine it serves its purpose I still really enjoyed the book I really enjoyed the first one I think it's a fun story and it's a good little palette cleanser but I gave Reckless a 3.5 out of 5 enjoyed it not the best writing and I wish the plot moved along a bit faster so there you have it those are the books that I read in June and July and now August is going to be a lot better for me I'm going to be reading a lot more books and getting back on track because I'm very behind on my reading goal for this year but anyway those are the books that I read in June and July and I will see you guys in the next video